Well, hello there. Welcome. Great to have you with us. It is Faith Matters once again. It is our time, Jen, where every week we say this is where we know we speak about the matters of faith. Exactly. In fact, the Word of God is a passion of ours and it should be for every single believer because in the Word is everything we need to sustain us no matter what we face in this life because the Word is what produces faith and the powerful the force of faith is what causes even the mountains in our lives to be moved. So thank you for watching. We're so excited to be able to share around the Word of God, the truth of His Word and bring faith into your lives. That's right. Now, if you have been following with us on the series, we are dealing with the book that has been written called The Five Keys to Prosperity. And uh, this book is out. It's available. It's on Amazon just for you. All right. So you can log on, search Five Keys to Prosperity, the author Andre Rabit, and you can get your own copy and follow along with us. We're dealing today with one of the keys, the very first key we're going to be getting into, Jen, in just a few minutes on the five keys. Remember, we've just listed five of them. There are many more, but we're just taking with five keys here that will really make a difference in your life. So great to have you with us. Uh, it's going to be a great time together and we are looking forward to what God has for you. Remember we take your emails, we take your questions and we deal with all of those at the end of the program as well. So get those emails to us, fm at myfaithtv.com and uh, we would love to be able to hear directly from you. So please get, get that email through and uh, we'll be right back after this. The lack of integrity and wisdom concerning the practical handling of finances in the church has often caused division and been widely debated in the media. In the book, Five Keys to Prosperity, Andre Raber outlines basic principles to assist anyone willing to learn and apply them for success in their lives. Now available at Amazon.com. Well, great to have you with us. Welcome back. And uh, Jen, nothing like getting into the Word of God today. Exactly. In fact, we've been speaking about, as you mentioned your book, The Five Keys of Prosperity. And just to remind you again, from the scripture in John 10, 10, Jesus said that the thief came to kill, to steal, to destroy. But I have come to give you life and life in abundance. And that is really what prosperity is. It's having and enjoying the abundant life that Jesus has given us in every single area of our lives. Financial prosperity is That's only right. one aspect of it, but He wants us to walk in prosperity in every area. That's right. Well, let's get straight into it. If you have not yet uh, contacted us, if you have not yet got your own copy of the book, do that on Amazon, Five Keys to Prosperity. If you haven't sent us an email, do it, fm at myfaithtv.com. But Jen, let's get going and let's get into what God has for us today. Uh, we, 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 we're going to go over the next few weeks and we're going to deal with each of what we believe to be five very important keys. I want you to understand these are not the only, the only five key. keys, all right? <laughs> these are just five what we believe to be important keys. Key number one that we've recorded that we're going to deal with this week and next week is seek the Lord. Absolutely. And, uh, you, you know, laying a solid foundation uh, for our faith is one of what I believe is very, very important for us. That relationship with God and seeking Him first and foremost is a very strong key. It is. And it's important again for the believers to understand the true concept of where God is. Not someone up in heaven that we have to shout to or look for or try and get hold of. But He is in fact inside of every believer. That's right. He is indwelling in us. We don't have to try and conjure up His presence. He is already part of us. He is in us. But it is so important that we learn to find Him in us. To, to what I mean by that is to actually get to a place where we are in His presence, where we tune into His voice and where we receive our strength from Him that is inside of us. That's right. You know, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But I want to read it from the Amplified Bible because it puts it so beautifully. We all know that scripture. And, and I want you to realize as we're talking about prosperity, 
We've said this in the previous program, but I want to reiterate it just one more time for those of you that didn't watch last week. Very importantly, that prosperity is not just money. We are talking here about prosperity being in every area of your life. You need to be prosperous in your health. You need to be prosperous in your mental condition. You need to operate in prosperity in your, your uh, uh, spiritual walk. A man who does not have God in his life and Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior understands spiritually he's not prosperous. And so I want you to understand this. Prosperity is not just about money. What we're talking here is about a lifestyle. What we're talking here is about pursuing God. And this is very important for us to all understand that. So let's look at this now as we go. Look what the Amplified Bible says. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, His kingdom, His righteousness, His way of doing and being right. Then all these things together will be given to you besides. In other words, if we pursue Him, if we do things God's way in our lives, Jen, everything's about to change. And that's exactly what it's about. So often we need to understand that there has to become a shift, especially in the lives of Christians. We kind of want to seek God for the things and we're actually seeking the things more than we're seeking Him. That's right. And that's really kind of the foundation that we need to have for our faith. Is your trust only when the prayers get answered. Yeah. So in other words, I only trust God when I see my list, I can tick off my list, all the things that He's answered for me. So often our whole motivation uh, to follow after God or to get into His Word is so that we can get an answer for our needs, that we can have Him supply. It's kind of like demand supply, you know, that's why we go after Him. But that is not what is going to lay a foundation. That's very shallow faith. A faith that is rooted and grounded in God and is strong enough to stand the test of time is the faith that that says, God, I believe in you. That's right. I seek after you. Yeah. I know that you are my comfort and you are my strength and you are the one who sustains me. Not the things, but you, God, you are my portion in, in this life. Isn't that what David said? And a little bit later, we'll get into David and a few other characters from the Bible who found the benefit and the real relevance of first seeking after the person of God and getting to know him and his thoughts and His way of doing things more than the things That's right. that That's He right. can bless you with. So fall in love with the giver before you choose to fall in love with just the gifts. In other words, why I'm in relationship with the Lord is based on my desire to want to be with Him first and foremost. The things, all the additions, all the things that get added to that, the blessings of my covenant relationship, I want to use the word general byproducts mm. of my relationship with Him. And so I want you to understand as we're dealing with this, what is a key to prosperity? If you're wanting God to come through in your life and, and you're wanting to see the, the victory in every area of your life, fall in love with Jesus. Mm. Fall in love with Him more than you ever have. I, I tell you, I, I've seen this time and time again, and, and, and I'm, not, I, I'm not talking here about, uh, you, you, you know, faking it. I'm talking here about a genuine God, I want to be with Amen. you. God, I want to spend time with you. God, I want to be in your word. Lord, I just, want to, I just want to sit around and talk to you as I talk to a friend. What is your relationship like with Him? If you don't have a daily desire to want to be with God, then I question the motives of your heart. Because if your heart relationship is only about what well, can I, I get, get from, from God, yeah. then you're always going to be on your knees being a beggar. Yeah. You're always going to be on your knees asking God, I it need this, I need this. There's always going to be something. You have to love God unconditionally. That's how He, he loved you. For who He and is. And that's the importance here uh, on this key in seeking Absolutely, him. because then it becomes more of a mechanical relationship more than anything else. And God is love. God is all about us. That is who He is. He, yeah. he is devoted to loving us and walking with us and revealing and manifesting Himself to us. And I really think 
that, I mean, we know that that is what separates us completely from any other faith or religion is the fact that we can have and enjoy a personal relationship with our God. That's right. It's, it's almost as if, Andre, we took everything out of the picture and it's almost, you know, th there's nothing else in our lives. If you can imagine yourself even on a deserted island with absolutely nothing but one person that you can have as your company, one mm. person that you can lean on, one person that walks with you, and that would be him. That's right. You know, we have to get to the place, it's not about the things I can get from him, it's not about him fixing all the problems, and he does all of that, but it's understanding who he is, and the only way we can really know who God is, is by his word. Mm. Well, his spirit that lives on the inside of us, and his spirit reveals the character and the nature of God through His Word. Jen, let's just detour here just for a moment. And, and I want to come back to this point. But, you know, I, I want to ask you a question. Do you want to have a love relationship with Him? Right. Because I think that's really the key to this whole discussion. And, and, and what people need to understand is, you know, we always want things, but we need to seek the giver, not the gift. And what is your relationship like with Him? You see, many of us go on a journey of our life, and, and I've seen this in my life. I believe you've seen this in your life, and we've spoken about this many times, but there are times when, when you can drift from God. Sure. You, you, can, you can move away from that, uh, I want to call it that intense relationship with Him. That doesn't mean He leaves you. He stays in he you. He stays in you. But, but you don't connect. You choose not to have relationship with Him. It's like a husband and a wife. And let's use this as again. And we've spoken about this as a previous example. Our connection between the two of us, if I'm in your presence, I need to communicate with Correct. you. I need to look you in the eyes. I need to talk to you. Uh, l let me just give you one tip here, husbands. If you don't communicate, you're in trouble. All right, and do your you best. Disconnect. You disconnect. <laughs> Try your best to communicate. Now it's not always easy. All right, it's it's difficult, but but circumstances and issues of the world uh, bring distractions between a husband and a wife. But the Precious. same yeah, and the pressures and all of that. And I mean, we were speaking to to uh, you were speaking to someone recently. And, uh, and they had just said how financial pressure and how the pressures of economics and situations in their life is causing her and her husband to, 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 to kind of part ways they a little bit. Loggerheads also. And they had loggerheads. Now that is understandable because that's what the work of the enemy is all about. Exactly. He, it's his desire to rob, kill and destroy, to bring a separation in your relationship with your partner. Now bring that into your relationship with God. How much easier is it to run away from God when problems come? This is where everybody makes the mistake. But when we don't get what we wanted, well, when calamity comes, when difficulties come, when you don't have the results, you, you're trusting God for a healing of a loved one and that loved one dies. Right. All right. How does that affect it, your it, it, relationship? It's crazy. It, 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 it makes you question God. Mm -hmm. You should never question God. It's God did not bring that sickness on that person. That's what I want you to understand. That, and, and God did not cause the death of that person. Everybody thinks, well, God did it. No, God didn't do it. The Bible clearly says it's the work of the enemy. Yes, and Sickness we, and death comes from, from the enemy, yes. not from God. Exactly. And it says that we are in a world that is cursed. We are in an earth that has been on an earth that has been cursed. And the devil is at work everywhere. Yeah. This, it, it, I mean, the, the word teaches us so clearly how everything is under a curse. But because we are born again, we have someone that we can connect with when Correct. times are tough. But even when times are good, and that's the point, because as soon as people, as soon as times get tough, everybody wants to run away from God. And they want to use terms like, well, this doesn't work. This Christianity stuff doesn't this work. Faith this stuff doesn't this work. faith stuff doesn't work. Everybody chooses to run away from God in difficult times instead of run 
to him. I was privileged just watching a group of people just the other day. There was a calamity that uh, recently had hit America. Right. And, uh, and it was one of these great hurricanes that came and hit America. And I was watching this group of people in this hall. The, they call it a hurricane shelter. And they were worshiping God. Wow. They were just singing. They were just uh, singing hymns and, and worship. To, and they were standing in this big circle in this hurricane hall. Have and they lost everything. Uh, and they lost everything. They had nothing to them. All they had was the backpack that came out of this flood and this devastation. And what were they doing? Worshiping God. I want to ask you, what would you do in a calamity? When you lose everything. When you lose everything. You see, we attach our belonging to the belongings of the world instead of attaching our acceptance and belonging to Jesus, mm -hmm. to Him. And that's well, what... I, I get what you say. I wasn't sure what you... But you're saying my self-worth, my quality of life has not got to do with the things in my life, but it has to do with who I am in God. Correct. And, and the thing is, if you get yourself into a disappointment, because yeah, here's the thing. The thing is that there'll be those people that'll say, God, how can you let this devastation happen to this region mm -hmm. of our home? How can you let floods come? Well, you haven't read your Bible. Go and read your Bible and you will see that these are things. These are signs of the end times. These are things that are saying these things are going to happen. Earthquakes, rumors of earthquakes, uh, calamity is coming. Yes. There is no way to, 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 not be a, to not see that happen around the world. But here's the thing. While your faith and trust and relationship is in God, that's who your security is. That's who you are. That's everything about you is in your relationship with Jesus. Now, do you know what? I love that you said that because immediately I'm reminded of a story in the Bible. Now, you know that um, there's a story about the disciples are in the boat with Jesus and the storm is coming up and Jesus is asleep. He's asleep in the boat, right? And the storm is devastating and it's, it's terrible and they fear. The Bible says that the disciples feared for their lives. They were so sure yeah. that they were going to die and they run down to Jesus and the very first thing they I say to him is don't you care about us yeah yeah don't you love us and isn't that what happens to us Every the time. minute a calamity comes even though we have walked with God even though we have his word in our heart even though we um, speak the word of God over our lives and we live in a place and we blessed but should something happen that fear grips our hearts the very first thing we do is say God don't you love us don't you care for us? Yeah. Now listen, we can accuse God of so many things and we know He's been accused of so many things. But the one thing human or humanity will never ever be able to accuse God on is His love for us. Mm. Really, would we honestly question His love for us when He gave everything? That's he right. gave everything. He gave His very life for us in the most horrible, cruel way. He laid down everything for us. That's how much He loves us. And every single day of our lives, He proves that love to us. Mm. So we could never, ever use that one against Him. That's when right. things are tough, when they don't go our way, when we feel that we things have failed, the very first thing that comes out should never be, don't you love us? Of course He loves you. That's right. And if, you, if we had taken the time to understand His love, how much He loves us, fear would never be the problem that it is in our lives. Mm. You know, I, I want you to understand, in order to see prosperity come in your life, you have to continually seek Him through devastation, through difficulties, through turmoils, through the loss of loved ones, through sickness that comes into your body. You have to continually pursue God. Mm -hmm. You have to fight the fight I'm of faith till the God. end. And you just have to love Him. You just have to love Him. He's a great God and He loves you. And, and His Word says, in spite of all of this, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but you are in the palm of my hand. I love you. And you know what the problem is, Jen? The problem is all of this sums up that we put more emphasis on the natural 
than we do on the supernatural. Absolutely. That's the bottom line. Now we've got a matter of minutes left here and we're going to have to carry this on next week. Yes. But that's what I, I want to get out to you. It's time for your supernatural to be so in love with Him that your supernatural outweighs your natural. Mm. Yes, the there spirit. might be sickness in your body. Yes, the spirit inside has to rise up. The faith inside has to rise up and conquer that fear that is trying to, to, to saturate you and take away everything inside of you because of that sickness that is plaguing your body. Understand you are a spirit being first and foremost yes. and it's the communion of your spirit with God. Yes. That's what seek first the kingdom of God yes. is all about. It's spirit to spirit, Hallelujah. deep to deep. And then he says, and all these things will be added unto you. God wants you to enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. He wants you to, to, uh, to, to have pleasure. He wants you to have fun. He wants you to have the best of things. He, he wants you to enjoy life. All of that comes mm -hmm. when you seek him first. We're going to carry on next week. We'll be right back. The lack of integrity and wisdom concerning the practical handling of finances in the church has often caused division and been widely debated in the media. In the book, Five Keys to Prosperity, Andre Raber outlines basic principles to assist anyone willing to learn and apply them for success in their lives. Now available at Amazon.com. Wow, Jen, what a time we've had about seeking the will of God and His purposes. It's all wrapped up in the book, Five Keys to Prosperity. I want you to get a copy of the book. Go to Amazon.com. You can download it. Type in my name, Andre Rabit. Remember, the Rabit is spelled just like it is on the screen, R-O-E-B-E-R-T. So do that. Uh, go, go online, get a copy of the book. It's going to be a blessing to you. Now, don't forget those emails. We, we love those emails. Every week, Jen, we are getting emails coming in. <laughs> FM at MyFaithTV.com. We want to hear from you. Have we got time for one today? Uh, we do, actually. And this is this has really blessed my heart because of how people are taking the message and really trying to make it theirs. Yeah. Um, this is Edward that has written us. And Edward has a question concerning tithing, which is awesome. We had a wonderful series on that as well. He said, thank you so much for the powerful message on tithing. He says, I am a farmer. I incur a lot of costs. Mm. And finally, I make the sales after, say, nine months of hard work. Right. I pay tithe monthly, but seriously, how do I pay my tithe? And how much is my real tithe as against what I now pay monthly? In other words, he's saying, do, does uh, as a farmer now, do I have to pay on um, the sales that I make after nine months? And I pay, you know, personally every month. Just help me here because he wants to do what the he's will right. of God is. Edward. Very, very uh, a big question for a short time that we have. But I, I want to explain it this way to you. Whatever you draw on a monthly basis to sustain yourself as a farmer, sow on that. Give your tithe on that privately and so individually. Give your tithe. Give your, your tithe. tithe. Yeah. give your tithe and sow over and above that. And you're doing that as a farmer. I know what it's like. Farming is hard work and well done to you for being a farmer. But here's the key. At the end of the year, you know what you've put into your farm. You know what comes out. You have a cost going in and you have a cost coming out. All right, you have something called a gross profit for your farm. In other words, that's your profits of the year. Take that proportion of those profits of the year and bring your first fruit to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You don't tithe on everything in a business. You tithe on your profits of a business. And Jen, that that's how it works. The income taking away the expenses, what is Correct. it? Correct. But what you don't do is you don't raid all your expenses and load everything not to make a profit. <laughs> you know exactly what it is. You know what's due to God and God honors what we call first fruits giving. As a farmer, you should understand that. And that's the greatest opportunity. So at the end of that nine month cycle, when your harvest comes in, it's called a harvest gift. All right. Many different terms are used in the word of God, but 
take of your first fruits of, of, that, of that harvest. If it costs you one million to invest in your farm for that year, and let's say you sell all your goods for one and a half million, you've made a 500,000 profit. You take that 500,000 profit and you take 50,000 of that. And Jen, that's what you tithe. Because your tithe is 10%. Because your tithe is 10%. So I hope that helps you. It's a big question with a quick answer. And that's all we've got time for today. Remember, get those questions to us. We do answer everyone privately on email as well. So all we need you to do is get them to fm at myfaithtv.com. And we'll be talking to more of you next week. And we are going to have another great time. Remember the book, Five Keys to Prosperity on Amazon.com. And it's going really cheap. You can pick up your own copy as well. All right. Don't forget, send us those emails. And Jenny, your blog, lettersfromjen.com. If you have haven't yet subscribed go to lettersfromjen.com and subscribe to Jenny's blog every week you get a great letter and we want to send you a daily devotional as well all right every single day we do a devotion and if you'd like to get that please send us an email fm at myfaithtv.com that's all we got time for we'll be back next week and come on seek the Lord like you never have this week and we'll talk about it again God bless Bye-bye. you